Hey everyone, in this video we'll be looking at chapter 4 of Sandy Metz's awesome book, Practical Object Orient Design in Ruby. In chapter 4, flexible interfaces are the name of the game, and it's a super important concept for Ruby. So over the course of building a program, you'll be having a lot of classes that interact with each other. And it's important to figure out how you can keep them independent and only interacting as much as they need to, but not more. And it's also important for like future-proofing your code to not have too much too much functionality built into one um, that goes back to the the concept of like single responsibility objects there's a brief section at the beginning of the chapter about unified modeling language and that's actually what we're going to be we're going to be looking at a few of the ones uh, from this chapter today and the, this is the first one is on screen here um, when you're looking at UML diagrams. They're generally read top to bottom and left to right. So if you see this one, you'd say, okay, we're starting with Mo the customer, and he's doing this suitable trip method, passing these two params to the trip class. And then for each trip found, do the suitable bicycle method, trip date, root type on the bicycle class and then come back. And then by the end of the diagram, we would say that Mo has now found a suitable trip and a suitable bicycle. So that's, that's basically how you read them. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward and just sort of takes, takes a little bit of looking at to get the intuition behind it. So over the course of chapter four, she gives out this very, very uh, nice example with the, the various classes, customer, trip, bicycle, mechanic, and sort of shows the progression of how you'd use a UML diagram to then design objects that interact well with each other. And so we'll, we'll look at that in a minute, um, but before we go into that, I want to give you a more simple example, um, actually from, from real life and you would you would actually probably run into this if you're if you're ever designing uh, a web app that for example takes a user's social security number but you better have a good reason to do that because social security number is not something to mess with but anyways so say you're designing an app and over the course of it you're over the course of your user signing up you want to take their social security number. And so that's a field on your on your form, username, password, email address, social security number, whatever else. And there's sort of some like wiggle room and it's wiggle room that you have to account for. Somebody might say, you know, name Daniel Schaefer, email, whatever, social security number, 123-45-6789. Or they might put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now both of those are valid social security numbers, but in your database, because when you want it to get qu queried later in your database, you want all the users' social security numbers to be in the same format, which in this case would be one, two, three, dash, four, five, dash, six, seven, eight, nine. And you could have a method in your user model that reformats whatever the person inputs before the user object gets saved. That's fine, but that's starting to like get a little bit convoluted for what the user object's purpose is, which is just storing user information. It's sort of getting off into like data munging a little bit. And that's not really that's not really the goal here. So what do you do about it? What a lot of people do is have a social security number object and that's where the the checking for validity happens and so what you what you might actually want to do is like in that social security number object it takes the param or whatever the user submits through the form it checks you know, it checks to see, okay, are there nine numbers in this? And if there are any letters, it gets taken out. Um, if there are 
any other characters that gets taken out. If I was if I was designing one for a social security number, basically I would take whatever the user submits, strip out everything that isn't a number, check to make sure that it's nine numbers long, and then put a dash after the second and fifth. Sorry, after the third and fifth numbers, and then return it to the user object. So that's like a fairly straightforward method, and you can very easily do it in the user object, but that's not the goal. And that's kind of this, uh, and it's a similar thing that you see uh, in in here, especially in this next diagram. It's it's uh, one of I should say one of the the key concepts from chapter four is objects interacting with each other and asking for what rather than telling how is the way that she phrases it and that's that's a a really a really important part and a really important consideration when you're designing objects and object interaction so in the context of the of of Sandy's example this is this is the trip class telling the mechanic class how to how to prepare a bike or in my example it'd be a user object telling a social security number how it should be formatted clean bicycle pump tires lube chain check brakes or in my case strip out all the non numbers check the length put the dashes back in it's it's a totally reasonable request. It just doesn't make sense to be in the trip model or to be in the user model. And so what you would what you'd want to take into consideration at this point is like how do we just make it so that the their only interaction is just just prepare bicycle or prepare social security number and it's up to the mechanic and you can't see what's going on in here and the you know the user object can't see what's going on in the social security number class but we just trust that whatever gets returned back is going to be a clean bicycle or it's going to be a properly formatted social security number and that's really nice because now in the future if the process for preparing a bicycle changes we don't have to go back to the trip class it can just be within the mechanic class we make a new method for whatever the new thing is and the rest of the code base will be unaffected because we had the foresight to just make a prepare bicycle method and we didn't have to you know we didn't have to go to the trip class and any other class that interacts with bicycles and update what preparing a bicycle means so she actually takes it like one step further and makes a trip finder class. So the customer just doesn't have to know anything about the inner workings of this bicycle trip company. He just needs, he just wants a bike and a suitable trip. And so he'll pass a few params here, the date that he wants to go, the difficulty, etc. And just that he needs a bike. The trip finder will triage these params in various ways. One of the things that they'll do is find a suitable trip, they'll find a suitable bicycle, and you know if he actually wants to wants to book the trip, at that point the trip finder might even have the the mechanic prepare the bike. And what gets returned to him is is the trip that he's going on and his bike and he's ready to go and that's his vacation so that's about all for this video we'll get to the next section of chapter four in the next one see you soon